Capricorn. Hello Capricorn, this is your forecast for September 2014 and the main focus for you here this month is all going to be about travel. For those of you who haven't had your vacation yet, this is a great month for you to spread your wings and get out of town for a little bit, especially those first few days, that first week there in uh, September. Uh, some of you have already here at the end of August gone to do so. The sun is in your ninth house for uh, long distance travel or also meeting up with uh, friends and family from afar that might be coming to you from out of state or out of country. But uh, by the third here, Mercury is also going to be in this area before it uh, moves into your 10th house of career. And then your mindset is all going to be about your goals, your ambitions, your drive and your climb and your ascent. Uh, to the tops and for you Capricorn that is always a good thing isn't it because you're so ambitious so Mercury from the 3rd of September onwards is going to be expanding this whole area for you and your career and balancing out those things that are important and is essential to you but we also have uh, the new moon here in this area of the ninth house that will be coming around here on the 23rd of September so that would be the area of you putting down your intentions that, you know, for the whole next year between now to that of next year, you would like to expand the area of the higher thinking, all right? Whether that means self-studying, um, don't have to go back to school to study, you know, the internet is a huge university in itself. But yeah, to, to, to gain more knowledge and uh, competence in that sense. Some of you might be going back to school to actually take some physical, literal classes. Great time to put down intentions for that as well. And uh, also, it's a great time just to pick up languages for those of you who are uh, studying it. This new moon is in the sign of Virgo, and Virgo is ruled by uh, Mercury, which has to do with language and that linear um, uh, speech that we have. Now, Venus and Jupiter is in your 8th house uh, this month, and Jupiter is going to be here a whole year until that of next summer. So you're going to see how Jupiter is going to be expanding this whole field of your money that you hold with your partner, whether that's a spouse, it could be with a, a business partner, it could be with an agent, as in royalties and commissions. So some of you are going to see that actually this is going to grow this year. And uh, for those of you who work on, with bonuses, commissions, royalties, great year. It only happens one year every 12 years. So make this year work for you. So each and every month I will remind you on that Jupiter in this placement because it could it slip you by if you don't actively do something? Of course it can. Opportunity can only come, but it won't drop in your lap. You know, we have to open up for those opportunities and grab them while they're there. Now until September 6th, you get Venus also in this area. So Venus and Jupiter together. And if you're listening to this on the August side, uh, to this forecast a little early, you will have even more so of a good potential to have these two work together for you in this area to set up contracts, negotiations, whatnot, whether it's with banks, wanting to apply for a loan, or whether you are signing some kind of book contract or agent contract, this is a great time for it. Because after the sixth, Venus is going to move into your ninth house of higher education, travel, and those things that we spoke about a little bit earlier. And that's where it's going to remain for the rest of September. Okay. Then we also have Mars. Let's look at Mars. Uh, you have Mars in your 11th house, hopes, dreams, wishes, friendships, but even more so for those of you working with, and I say work because Mars is our action, our drive, our ambition, our energetic levels is now focused into the area of how groups can um, help you along or where you will be putting some of your energy behind a group to ensure that that will grow. So you have until the 14th, the 
first two weeks of September to actually ground something solid. And when I say solid, it is because your ruler, Saturn, in, is in this area and has been working there now for a good mm, year and a half, two years. And uh, it, it, it's going to be done by December. So Mars is activating what you've been working on for these last two years. Um, and it's passing by pretty quickly. So, but you will come to see how something is just, it's like interlocking wheels, all right? Like a, a clock, in fact. It's going to be two years before uh, Mars is going to be back to this area, but then Saturn will be gone. So Saturn's not going to be back in this area for another 29 years, right? So when the two of them come together, it's rare in this area. They come together in other areas. But for you to really hone in and get the best out of what you can do with your affiliations now, your network, this is the month to do so. Especially there, the first two weeks in uh, September. And for those listening in August, you want to make the last two weeks of August really be streamlined, okay? Pay attention because whatever opportunities are coming now, they may just be, you know, a harvest for you down the road when Mars gets into your second house of income. So, but after the 14th, Mars will move out of this area and you might just feel a little tired, exhausted. The 12th house is when we retreat back into ourselves. Uh, because it's shutting down on a two-year run, okay? And this is when the engines need to be serviced, right? <laughs> Your body, spirit, and mind, they just need to heal and be quiet a little bit. And it won't stay there for too long, um, but you might feel that extra need to pull back because then it's going to be up and running here in the first house your personality, but that is not before a little bit later. It has nothing to do with September. So looking here at what we got going, we have on the 9th, we have a decision perhaps that needs to be made. You might feel a little unsettled about it because Mercury and Pluto might have a little mishap or not really seeing eye to eye. But then, you know, go with your gut, go with your higher mind, because that's on the 9th. Because on the 10th, Jupiter is exact there with that very same Mercury that's doubting this Plutonian energy, right? So Jupiter is that higher mind coming in saying, you, you know, go with your gut and that is where your decision should lay and uh, you will feel it. So try to avoid anything on the 9th if you have to come back to somebody with a decision, stall it to the 10th, you'll know a little bit more. Then you have on the 11th, we got the Sun and Saturn that will leave you feeling, uh, Saturn is your ruler, so it will leave you feeling very grounded, it's a, uh, harmonious, it's a favorable aspect, the sun is you, and so you looking back over where you've been, what you've done, and the, the two planets are coming between the ninth and the eleventh house, so that's you, your higher mind, your focus, where you, you have your eyes on your goal on that horizon, and then Saturn, coming in here with a group saying, yes, we're locking this in. This sounds good. So if you're working with expanded you know, groups in your career, this should be a great day for you to stay confident if you have any meetings. But then we have a little test on the 13th. Mercury, once again, communication. Uh, if you're holding a presentation or a talk, giving a speech, th there might be um, a little erratic energy, Uranus is opposing your speech on this day. Uh, if you're having to come with a decision, I'd say hold off to the 14th, because then Venus, which is sense of self of values, how you value yourself, um, is in a beautiful alignment with Pluto, and Pluto will transform, bring into being a new start, a new beginning that has to do with money and values. So there might be a little upset on the 13th, but on the 14th, you'll know. And this will even more so in the following week as that Venus moves from that Pluto to Saturn. Uh, on the 21st, you will have feedback on something that you have settled that you're apparently quite happy with here. So uh, it, it's an important month. It kind of seems like a little up and a little down. But when you're ever in doubt, I'd just like to say, 
doubt is always your friend. We have doubts so that we, we put the brakes on so we don't act, don't leap too quickly. On the 22nd, you might want to leap. Uh, and our, our leap is Mars because Mars is our energy. It's our, our ambitions. It's our goals. And it's hasty, right? So on the 22nd, there might be something that sounds good. But if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Neptune is there, so there's always a little warning. Neptune is great when it is good, under the good aspects. It's our hopes, dreams, visions, and so forth. But when we have it square, it might just be a smoke screen, all right? And Mars is wanting to act, but hang a little bit back. Give it a few days to see if you still think about whatever this could be an offer, uh, whether it's real or if it's true or if it just was exactly that, a smoke screen. All right, and that will be between your 12th and your third house. So I'm feeling that it's somebody you're talking to that might say something, share something, but it's not out in the open because because this Mars being in the 12th house too, it's like that's a little hidden. Neptune here is square. It's like nah, not too good, but you will know. Always, always follow that gut feeling, and if your gut is in doubt, well then listen to the doubt. It's your friend. All right, not your foe. So as you can see, we have a planet's changing here. We've got Mercury on the third, moving out of uh, your ninth house into your career house. On the sixth, we've got Venus moving into Virgo from Leo, where it currently is in the eighth house. So you'll see how that passion is starting to take up. Might get a little antsy and want to travel there. And then we have Mars moving into uh, Sagittarius there on the 14th. All right. So... Uh, Mars is fire and Sagittarius is fire, so uh, the combination uh, there is great. So listen here, uh, Capricorns, I hope you'll have a beautiful month. Do go listen to your moon and rising sign and come back later on in September if you're listening to this early, just so you can get all the dates again uh, refreshed in mind. So I'll see you next month. Bye now.